Hello everyone. Uh, if you have been watching my channel, then you know that I have been working on a uh, Star Wars themed cantina, a miniature Star Wars themed cantina. Um, and I kind of hate it. Uh, so I'm probably going to start over, but I'm going to show you how I made it. Uh, you're going to see exactly what I did wrong. And then we're going to talk about it a little bit. So first and foremost, we start with just your typical Amazon box. You find the seam in the, the box and it's really easy to just rip that open. And if you're smart, you cut the tape first. I did not do that, so I had to do that second. But as soon as you get the tape done and you've ripped that seam, this box will actually just unfold really easily into sheets of cardboard. And then it's even super simple to just cut those sheets uh, because they're just like a little, that little um, thin area that, that connects you to those sheets. Um, I needed a plastic bag because the next step, and this is where I screwed up the entire project right here. You see how much glue I put down? Yeah, that ruined it. I tried to spread it out because I really wanted this entire thing to stick really well but you'll see later on what happens. At this point, I let it cure overnight. Uh, you'll see the lighting change here in just a moment. Uh, you'll see when I take the art kit off that there's rippling in the cardboard, and that's not a good sign at all. Using a razor blade, I cleaned up the base, and then I took this image I found of the uh, cantina, put it into Photoshop, and just kind of traced it out a bit. And then took those tracing lines, put them onto the base so that I had an idea of where I was gonna build the structure up. Uh, and then just using some strips of cardboard, uh, you know, very simply measured them uh, to the walls. And then just here I'm marking it, and then I'm gonna use uh, my knife to cut those markings so that I have the, the exact sizes going around making sure I have everything. Once I do have everything, then the best part of any of these projects is hot gluing everything. And if you notice, that is the same hot glue gun that I jammed a crayon in, which is why all of the hot glue is coming out green. Once I had the walls all set up, I wanted to set up the bar. Uh, so I took another piece, of, another strip of cardboard. I wanted to put that as kind of like a, a raised floor. So I cut that out. And then what you're watching me do here, I'm actually cutting one side of the cardboard, just one side with the corrugation. Uh, this is something I learned from Bentley House Minis. And you'll see this is the, the best part. I cut it in half and then you'll see, look at this cardboard. It just flops around. You can see it, it, it's making it very flexible, very flexible. And there's just gonna be like this one little shot, and I apologize, this is the best shot I got of it um, with, with my arm out of the way, where you can see that that just wraps around so perfectly. And then I hot glued that in, I hot glued another wall in, I hot glued some supports on the wall, and this is about where I stopped. So, now, now that I've got this thing all glued together. Um, I here's some things I love about it. I, I still absolutely love this curve. This is this curve and how easy that was to do with cardboard and how good that looks. I love that. Absolutely love that. The thing is because I did too much glue, um, you, you can't I, I don't think it's gonna show up on the camera, but it is warped. This whole thing is is warped and it just frustrates me to no end. Also, the, the, it's, I don't know exactly where during tracing from, from the paper, taking the paper and tracing it onto the cardboard, but you can see that these are not, you know, square angles. I mean, like this is too far that way compared to these. I mean, obviously that you've got like these what should be 45 degree angles, but these are not 45 degree angles because this is too far that. And it's just like, there's just too many things about this that really upset me. Um, now, I did a test uh, with, with just hot glue. 
So this is a piece of cardboard. Uh, same same thing where the corrugation is uh, it, it, it the corrugation is in a um, not parallel opposite of parallel whatever the opposite of parallel is uh, in in opposite of parallel pattern so cross hatching it um, to add strength and I just simply glued these two pieces of uh, cardboard together with hot glue and this is working fantastic. And I'm just, I'm furious with myself because this was so much easier than the glue, didn't ruin the cardboard at all, and and it was so much faster. Like, I could have just, I could have just kept working. This took me several days because I had to wait for it to dry, and I'm not even happy with it. So, that is what it is. Now that I've got this, uh, I also noticed this page, my tracing paper, fits almost perfectly on here, and now I've got, like, straight edges or, I'm sorry let me hold that up I've got like straight edges so that's gonna solve the other that's gonna solve the like squaring problem as well so I'm definitely gonna start start over I've just decided I'm gonna start over because it's gonna take a lot more work to like finish this and and then I'm still not gonna be happy with it so if I just start over with a new base I'm gonna be way happier with it so I redid all of the steps up until here, so I have an entirely new cardboard base. The next step is to take this joint compound and just using straight joint compound, I'm gonna fill in all the the exposed corrugation. And what that's gonna do is that's going to make it so that it looks a lot less like cardboard uh, with the final product. Taking some school glue, I'm gonna mix that with one-to-one -one with the plaster and then cover the entire cardboard base with it. And what this does is this really just makes the cardboard much stronger, much firmer, and it's going to last a lot longer. This is also where I screwed up for the second time. I used way too much of the school glue. The school glue has a very high water content, I believe, which is why it, it caused it to work before. And unfortunately, I did it again. I used too much of it with the plaster, and, and it caused it to warp again. The silver lining, however, was that it really only warped the outside area, that, that area that should be a patio. And so I decided in order to fix that, I was just gonna cut the, that section off. I have to admit that at this point, I was really upset. I really did not like how this was turning out. It, the the plaster-covered base just looked terrible. The slight warping on the bottom, it really upset me and I, I, I almost wanted to give up again. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, I had been talking about this project on my daily videos and I knew that a few people probably would be excited to see this done. So I decided, you know what, I was going to finish this project and, and just, I'm just going to finish it. And whether I'm happy with it, whether I'm not, I'm sure I'll learn something. So here, what you're seeing me do, I, I want to make a stone flooring. So I'm actually testing out if school glue or hot glue is uh, the better way to glue stones down. What I'm using for stones is actually just chipboard, which is the cardboard that you use, um, that you get from from snack packaging and, and, and such. Uh, so I did hot glue, uh, hot glue is the one that's already down on the screen, and then school glue on this other one. What I learned, the school glue and the hot glue both work amazing, um, except the school glue is a little bit messier. It's liquid as opposed, I mean, the hot glue is a, a little bit liquid. The hot glue dries much faster. The it doesn't squish all over the place. Like you can see as I'm putting down the school glue, it, it kind of slips out. Otherwise, they both work fantastic. Uh, when this dried, you could not tell which one was which uh, until I ripped them up. The, the hot glue ripped up a little bit faster than the school glue, but I'm not gonna be ripping up my, my cantina, so I'm just gonna go with hot glue. One of the major advantages of going with hot glue is I love playing with a hot glue gun. It's so much fun to melt hot glue on anything and then stick it to something else. I don't know why, it's just super satisfying and I love it. So at this point, I'm just taking a bunch of these cardboard pieces and kind of putting them in and filling out the floor and making sure that I like the pattern. It looks a little bit random. 
maybe it looks a little bit like someone was kind of building it out with what they could afford or what they had or, or whatever the case may be. The, the one thing that I, I will kind of note at this point is how much my my mindset is changing from a Star Wars cantina to like a Dungeons and Dragons cantina. I, I do love the aesthetic of building in such a way of these are the resources I have and therefore I'm just gonna build a thing. So I'm really kind of enjoying building the, these stones into the flooring in such, in, in such a semi-random fashion that, that it, it's gonna come out with a kind of a natural feeling and I, and I love that. With the flooring done, I decided that I didn't want to do another coat of plaster over the, the stones. I thought that another coat of plaster would, would unfortunately like even them out and it wouldn't actually make it look like different solid stones. So I just went straight for painting with, uh, th this is the base coat I'm putting on. I'm putting on just like kind of a gray, uh, grungy dirt base coat <laughs> uh, so that uh, later when I do kind of some dry brushing it'll it'll be able to, to really bring out the, the stonework uh, for the floor it's that gray color for the walls what I'm gonna do is put on a kind of a grungy dirty yellow color because it, again this is supposed to be the Star Wars Cantina or at least inspired by it I know it's completely off from the Star Wars Cantina I probably shouldn't say Star Wars Cantina anymore but uh, the Star Wars Cantina, it's yellow, it's grungy. It's also made out of some kind of sandstone, like maybe like a, it, I, don't, I don't know if you can make adobe out of, stuff, out of sand. I know you can make it out of mud. And, anyway, the point is that the sides will be a yellow, dirty yellow color to emulate that it's, it's made of sand. This next part is my absolute favorite part of this entire process, and it came from an accident. I was trying to just fill in the little spaces where the wall meets the, the floor just to make sure that there wasn't any white. I accidentally loaded up the brush with too much paint and it got everywhere. But as soon as I saw it, I felt like a child who had never had candy before because I started dry brushing this stone and oh my god, it looked amazing. And so I just went to town with it and I loved how the dry brushing effect came in and started really just making these stones come alive. I was so excited. By this point, you probably have noticed that the floor of the bar has been pretty blank. What I did was I 3D printed some, just some black stone pattern work and then I hot glued that into the slot. I wasn't super happy with how it came out. However, it was close enough that when I started painting it, it's gonna look a lot better. The next step, unfortunately, I didn't get the best footage of. I, I 3D printed some doors that I found on Thingiverse. They were sci-fi doors, so they looked okay. I printed them in gold and then did copper paint on top of them just to kind of give them a little bit of grungy feel. I wasn't super happy with it. So I came back and I did a dry brushing of black. And I was kind of thinking if I didn't like it, you know what? I could reprint these doors. This is like 30 cents of plastic, so I don't care. But when I did the dry brushing of black, oh my God, this was another moment where these doors went from this crappy piece of plastic into just amazing pieces of art. I'm going to show a final image of the cantina in just a moment. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you so much. If you made it this far, you probably liked the video, so you should click the like button and subscribe and do all the things so that I know that you enjoyed this. Uh, I put a lot of work into this. Uh, the video and editing the video, that's the reason this took me forever to actually upload this video. I did not, like I've edited videos before, but I don't know why this was dragging me so hard, but it was a lot of work. Anyway, um, special shout out to uh, uh, Bentley House Minis, another channel. I'm going to link in the description. 
basically all of these techniques uh, were developed by her. Uh, and so if you want to do one of these projects, you should definitely check out that video. She does a much better job of shooting this style of video. Um, and as well as like come up with all of this stuff. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. And here's how the final, uh, here's how the final piece looks. <laughs>